Welcome back to the News of 10. Nigeria's D Tigers have become the first team to qualify for quarterfinals of the FIBA Afro Basket following their 106 the 72 win over Egypt. Evelyn Nakata led the Nigerian charge with 24 points and 13 rebounds as Sam Vincent's side marched to their third straight win. Jennifer Atonia posted another double double with 15 points and 12 rebounds, while Izin Nekalu and Sarah Ogoke added 18 and 13 points. Nigeria's next match is against Guinea on Tuesday, August 22nd. In the Nigeria Professional League, Plata United's lead has been cut short after they lost by two goals to nil against ABS FC in a lowering loss coupled with MFM FC's 1-0 win over Gumba United now means only three points separate both sides at the top with three games to play. Elsewhere, Rangers International beat Casina to climb to 10th on the log. Rivers United also eased relegation fears with a 2-1 win over Ingimba. Shooting Stars beat Nasara United by two goals to nil. Anthony Opoto's hat-trick helped Lobi Stars team El Kanemi Warriors 3-2. FC Fayoba edged Aqua United 1-0. Sunshine Stars also piped. Niger Tornadoes 2-1. Already relegated Remo Stars lost 2-0 to Wiki Torres, while Kano Pillars beat Abia Warriors 2-0. Nima Mwagwa puts Pillars ahead on 25 minutes. And this time around, is it? And that's the first goal of their counter. A true pass, Kano Pillars, and they celebrate. The man who has scored for Enyimba, and that's another opportunity. Super Eagles midfielder Rabiu Ali added a quick second two minutes later to seal all three points for Pillars. He is the man, the goal to man, if you're a Kano Pillars fan. A one pass goal. To the English Premier League, Marcus Alonso scored twice as Chelsea ruined Tottenham's first Premier League game at Wembley with a late 2-1 win. An own goal from Mamechi Batshuayi had looked set to rescue a point for Spurs, but Alonso, who had scored a superb first-half free kick, fired a low finish through Hugo Lloris at his near post with two minutes to go. In the days of the game, Huddlesfield Town beat Newcastle United 1-0 to maintain its perfect start to the season. Samo Farah has signed off from British track racing with victory in the 3,000 metres at the Birmingham Diamond League meeting. Farah won at a canter in his penultimate race, coming home in 7 minutes, 38.64 seconds. The 34-year-old now goes to Zurich on Wednesday to bring the curtain down on a track career which yielded four Olympic gold medals and a further six in the World Championships. In cycling, quick steps, Eve Lampard has taken the Volta a España red jersey with victory on stage two. The Belgian attacked inside the final kilometre, holding on for his first stage win in a Grand Tour and the company 10-second bonus. Teammate Matteo Trenton came second, with Britain's Adam Blythe third. Team Sky's Chris Froome fell behind a split in the peloton, but moved up to ninth overall, 21 seconds off Lampard. Zimbabwe's First Lady Grace Mugabe has been granted diplomatic immunity from the South African government over a case of alleged assault made by a 20-year-old South African model. The immunity allows her to leave the country without answering questions about the incident. The model, Ms. Gabriela Engels, says lawyer, says they intend to challenge the immunity decision in court. 
the decision was made by the South African government in a notice from International Relations Minister Maite Nkane Mashabani. Officials in Iraq say they've begun an operation to retake the Tal Afar city, one of the last cities in the country held by the Islamic State. The army targeted Tal Afar after seizing Mosul, the ISS main stronghold, 55 kilometers to the east in July. Tal Afar, which has a mainly Shia Muslim population, fell to IS in 2014. It sits on a major road between Mosul and the Syrian border that was once a key supply route for the jihadist group. Anti-IS coalition forces estimate that between 50,000 and 100,000 civilians remain in and around the city. Spanish police have discovered a 12-strong terror cell that carried out two attacks in Spain this week, had collected 120 gas canisters and was planning to use them in vehicular attacks. Canisters were found at a house set to be used by the cell that blew up in the town of Alcanar on Wednesday night. Police are still hunting for the driver of the van that hit dozens of people on Barcelona's Las Ramblas, killing 13 of them. In addition to the 13 killed on Thursday afternoon, a woman died in a second vehicle attack early on Friday in the town of Cambrils. Five suspected jihadists were shot dead by police in the second attack. The Catalan authorities have also confirmed that a British-Australian seven-year-old, Julian Cadman, was among those killed in Barcelona. And the main news again. Celebrations today continued across the country as different groups continue to celebrate the return of President Mamadou Buhari from London after over 100 days of medical vacation. Well, from the streets of Daura and Katsina, the president's home state, to the federal capital territory, the return of the president continued to be a source of celebration. Police have opened investigations into the murder of Governor Samuel Tom's aide in the early hours of today. Mr. Adyoro's wife, who was also shot during the attack in their residence in Makode, is currently receiving treatment at an undisclosed hospital in the state. On the foreign scene, South Africa's government has granted diplomatic immunity to Zimbabwe's First Lady Grace Mugabe which allows her to leave the country without answering questions about an assault allegation. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarakshi Ubani. Good night.